After the impact caused by the publication of the Book of Monsignor Ginswain, Pope Benedict's Secretary, another book has just been published this week which is already causing a strong impact. The author of this book is none other than Pope Benedict himself. It is Post Homo's work. It is a book that collects the articles, the theological writings that the Pope has been writing while he was a pontific emeritus, that is to say, the almost 10 years since he presented his resignation until very shortly before his death. It is a book whose title is linked to the first one that he made him known as a promising young German theologian who was already then looking to said to became a great figure in the church thinking. If that one was entitled Introduction to Christianity, this one is entitled What is Christianity? It is a book that should certainly be read calmly because, like all of the Pope Benedict's works, it is profound and worth looking at almost word by word. But the first thing, the first question that is drawing the most powerful attention at the moment is why did the Pope deliberately wanted it to wanted it the book not to be published until after his death. Perhaps some would think that this was a delicate gesture, a detail on the part of the pontiff of the Pope Emeritus, uh, so as not to interfere in the government of his successor Pope Francis. I am sure that his, this has also influence, but according to the editor of the book, that is to say to the person to whom Benedict entrusted the documents he had been written, so he could edit them, work with them, and publish them. Elio Guerrero, according to him, there is even a stronger motive than this delicacy with his successor. Elio Guerrero says, he writes in the introduction to the book, in the prologue, that he has a letter from the Pope Benedict explaining why he did not want this work to see the light of the date after his death. In this letter, among other things, the late Pope says, for, me, for my part, I no longer want to publish anything, the theory of the art circles hostile to the German is so strong that the appearance of any word of mine immediately provokes a murderous uproar in them. I want to spare myself and Christianity from this. The word used by Elio Radio in the translation of this letter of this text where Benedict commissioned him to edit the book is bocciare, an Italian word bocciare, which can be translated in various words, uproar, clamor, even perhaps scandals. But what is most significant is the other word that accompanies it, murder. It is murderous clamor. It is murderous uproar. That is to say, it is something that it is expressed uproar, clamor, but it reflects what is in the heart. It reflects something deeper. It reflects murderous clamor. It murderous hatred. Murderous clamor. Was Benedict exaggerating when he said this? When he said that he did not want more trouble, more scandals, more manifestations of hatred against him? Was he exaggerating? Not at all. That hatred accompanied him for almost all his life, from the moment that he broke the relationship, or at least the ideological friendship, with the group of Central Europe theologians who organized and direct the Second Vatican II because he broke away from them because he did not agree with what they wanted it to do with the council in its application. 
From that moment he began to be persecuted. The persecution did not lead him for a moment. It did not lead him when he was, for many years, prefect of the doctrine of the faith. It did not abandon him while he was a pope in the eight years that he governed the church. That murder's hatred was expressed in a strong way when the world media demanded in a strong way that his resignation because he had been, according to them, the protector of pedophile priests. This murderous hatred was even expressed in the request that he been tried again for the same alleged crime of protecting the pedophile priests in Germany, to the point that the court that had decided to try him again for some alleged crime has said that he will not give up trying to him even though he is deaf, but will continue the trail when it is known who his legitimate heir is. Murderous hatred against this man, simply because he wanted to be faithful to Jesus Christ. But Benedict could well say that Psalm 129 was fulfilled in him. How much they have persecuted me from my youth. Let the Lord say so, but they have not been able to defeat me. How much has he suffered these good and wise men? How much? He has suffered, but not only him. How much so many Catholics are suffering within the church? So many Catholics, including priests. So many Catholics simply because they want to receive communion in the mouth or want to participate in the Mass according to the ancient rite or want to be faithful to what the Word of God and tradition teaches, which are the two sources of revelation. How much suffering there is in the Church, and not only in the Church, but also in the Church itself. And not only from the classic enemies from the outside, but also from our own brothers. How much pain, how much suffering, how much glamour, how much murderous hatred. But we have to be careful with one thing. We must not forget it. It is very important. Our Lord. And behind Him, the long life of martyrs always die forgiven. We must not forget this. We cannot return evil for evil. We cannot respond to hatred with hatred. We cannot do the same as what they do to us. We are living in a very complicated moment in the history of the Church, very complicated. And it is a moment that can already be considered a de facto schism. There are two churches in one. But if the time should come when this de facto schism has to become a juridical schism, a tragic moment if it should come. We must try to make the divorce as amicable as possible, for the same reason as when a marriage breaks up, for the good of the child, for the good of the people of God. We cannot be returning hatred even to those who hate us. And in a special way, I say certainly we cannot do with Pope Francis what they have done with Pope Benedict. Pope Benedict in this book says that Francis is not his enemy and thanks him for the support that he has given him. If we have value to some words, we have to give value to others as well. I would not like to see a post almost book of Pope Francis published in a few years. Time that says the same thing that Pope Benedict has just said, in which he says that his very word 
was great, greeted by a sector of the church with a murderous clamor. Returning hatred for hatred, evil for evil, is neither the weight of Jesus Christ, nor the weight of the martyrs, nor what Benedict has done. We note with great pain the situation, not only the suffer by this good, humble, holy man, this man who did not know prison like Cardinal Pell, but who was persecuted in this slanderer like him, with the aim that by staining his name, his teaching could also be stained. Neither Christ nor martyrs nor Benedict returned evil for evil. However difficult it may be today, we must do the same and we must continue to humbly pray for the church. See you next week, God willing.